So, I just got back from my mom and dad's house, where I got some new books. I got Stephen King's Cujo. Uh, that was like, like $2.99, which I didn't realize. Uh, I got Salem's Lot. Been looking for that one for a while. This was also $2.99. This Goodwill had like the display case at the front. There were like some more expensive books. I got the first Percy Jackson and the Olympians. I've been needing that one. And I got this like three in one Jules Verne, 20,000 League Under the Sea, Mysterious Island, Journey Center of the Earth. So this will go into my classic shelf. Pretty dope. This was like 99 cents. Anyway, I was at my mom's. And my car apparently had been leaking fuel. The fuel line rusted out, and I like I was only in Somerset, and I had to quit doing my book shopping and come home and get my car fixed. And I ended up staying there longer than I meant, but I had my book with me. So I finished reading *Fire and Blood* by George Martin, and let me just say, *Fire and Blood* is I give it a four out of five. I thought it was very good. I thought it was better than. Dance of the Dragons, yeah, the fifth book of the original Game of Thrones. Um, it's not a typical book that it's just like a story and you just read like the plot and you have main character and stuff. This is a, it's like a history book of a fictional family in the Game of Thrones. So it's the history of the first from Aegon the Conqueror, uh, the, the whole Targaryen family, up until... Uh, Aegon the second or Aegon the third? Yeah, Aegon the third. There's like a bunch of Aegons and a lot of Aemons. But if you look at the line in the back, here's the Targaryen family history. Oh wait, actually this one shows the succession. Um, so it goes to like here. <laughs> so there's still Daeron the first, Baylor the first, Baylor the blessed. He's like a really important guy. Viserys II, Aegon the Fourth, Daeron the Second, Aerys the First, Makar the First, Aegon the Fifth, Jaehaerys the Second, and Aerys the Mad King. So this isn't in the book. I thought maybe this is in the the night in the Night of the Seven Kingdoms. It's a story about Egg, which is one of the Aegons. I think he was like maybe Aegon the. F no, he never was. I think it was the Aegon that was never a king. Because he's the one that ended up going to the wall. I don't know how many Egans there were. So I think it's like 300 years from Egan the Conqueror to when Game of Thrones started. So, not a lot of dialogue. There's only like, you see characters will say stuff if it's like really important throughout history. Like a really important moment, somebody has to say something. But it's pretty much just like... It's like in that one chapter of the Bible, it's like this guy begat this guy, this guy begat this guy, but it's like, it's easy to read and it's interesting because they're just laying out all these important points and it was supposed to be like written by all these septons and maesters and this one fool, like a court jester named Mushroom, who was named because he has a giant dick and he was like around the king and they were all like, assumed he was an idiot so they said a bunch of stuff in front of him so he just got all these like records and he makes kind of like a, a porno pornographic kind of a historical record, but it's supposed to be really accurate. It's really good. Um, so the TV show, House of the Dragon, doesn't start in the book till about 300 pages in. And it's a little bit different from the book. But then also, Dance of the Dragons, the fifth book of the first series, is something that happens in this book. So the Dance of the Dragons in that is a different Dance of the Dragons? I don't know, that, that should probably be called that House of the Dragon and call the TV show Dance of the Dragon. Because that's when, like, Aegon the, Viserys is the main guy in the TV show. And, like, none of the characters in here, like, the oldest person in this book <laughs> lived to be, like, 48. And in the TV show, Viserys is supposed to be, like, they have memes about how old he is and stuff. It's weird. So, like, people are getting married at, like, six or nine, and they come of age at, like, 15, and they start having sex at 15, they have offspring, because nobody lives past, like, 26, hardly. 
Unless you're like an old maid and you're having babies at like 33 and 34. You're like, holy shit, this one lives so long. It's crazy. <laughs> and like somebody, uh, which one was it? Was it Jaharis or Viserys? Had like 13 kids. And like a bunch of them died from childbirth. And like a bunch of accidents happened. And then like you would have Baylor or, or Balon. I think he died. He was supposed to be the successor, and then he died. So then the girl was next in line, and they skip over her, and it causes all these rifts. It's different factions start splintering off, and then they marry them back together a lot of times. And like Jaharis and Alisania, or Alisana, whatever she was, they were like the the brother sister got married. And they had one of the most interesting reigns, but it wasn't like a lot of war. It was kind of like a reign of peacetime right before Viserys. And that's not in the TV show. They skipped that because I guess they want to have a lot of action scenes and like murder, betrayal, and rape, and killing, and all that kind of stuff. But he had like these two sisters, I think, that were like with him. Maybe that's a different guy. One of them had these two sisters that was with him. And like certain ones will have dragons, and certain ones. The dragons will die and when they put them in their crib and stuff. And then the dragons themselves are all kind of like characters. Because, uh, like, what was it? Baylor the, um, or Balon the, the Great Dread. He was, like, the oldest and then he died. And then Vagar was the oldest for a long time. And then, uh, Viserys' dragon. I can't remember what his name was. And there was Sunfire. He was, like, a really cool dragon. But then he got, like, they all die different interesting ways and stuff. It's really cool. Um, there's also it mentions all these cool things about the world of Game of Thrones and Westeros that are interesting that nobody's made a TV show or book about yet like the, uh, the Ashai and there's like an Asian place called Yiti that nobody's they've never had like an Asian person in Game of Thrones really um, the Daenerys scenes they'll have them like over in Marine and uh, per or not, what was it called? Um, Pentos and those kind of places, right? But there's these summer islands that has like pretty much dark, dark black people, the summer islander. And then there's like the magic stuff that's kind of weird. Like sometimes you have a witch that can actually do stuff. So there's some kind of magic system in the world that you don't really get a lot of play with. Like the the Relor, the Red God. Like in the TV show, she's lighting swords on fire and stuff doing all kinds of crazy magic so there's stuff to the world plus there's people in like a shy that's supposed to have like magical powers there's somebody else that did something that was magical it's really cool uh there's also the, the iron men the drowned god they have this like one guy that supposedly walked into the ocean because his father had died and he said i'm gonna go talk to my father and he comes back years later and he called him the twice drowned and then, like, there's this thing about there's a driftwood throne that supposedly they were gifted to by the Merlin King. I don't know. You think that's like some kind of like merman that came out of the water, and it could be some kind of like sea monster that's under the ocean. Maybe that like really is. There's like so many things they could explore. Um, and there's also this one scene where this Targaryen girl she flies off on her dragon to Old Valyria. That's where they originally all came from, the Targaryens and the uh, what was the other family? Not Valentine. What the hell? The sea snake people. Uh, they all came from Old Valyria, and this girl came back, and she had this weird disease, like she was burning up, like she was on fire, and then they said these things came out of her that had like snakes with hands and worms with faces, and it was weird. Like they don't explain that. There's so many things they could go through and explain. Um, there's also a scene that would have been really cool for the TV show where, where is this, Eamon was like the next in line, not the bad Eamon, but Eamon the first, and these pirate guys are fighting against him, and he shoots at somebody, and it misses, and it kills Eamon, so that starts this war, and it kills like thousands of people, which makes me think like in the, in the real world, if we sent like politicians, sons, well I guess we did send like Prince Harry went to war, right? But if somebody had killed him in war, it could have started like this whole extra set of conflicts and stuff. It could cause all this problem. That's why we don't send politicians' kids to war. Because it's like that one politician had that gay daughter and like he started enacting all these 
he was like totally against gays until his daughter came out as a lesbian and now I'm pro-gay because it involves me. It's that kind of bullshit. Um... Yes, yeah, so Jaehaerys' reign ends. Viserys takes over. And when he dies... Well, you've seen the show, you know what pretty much happened. You get Rhaenyra. It's like, they would go on these progresses. Once you have a new king, they would go around and like visit all the different holdings that are leal to them. Like the castles and the lords and stuff. They would have banquets. And it's like really hard to host them because the dragon eats so much. And they have like all these thousands of men and later on they reduced it and it only took like so many but Reyna the queen that never was no wait not her the first Daenerys Daenerys the first when they went around with uh, Jaehaerys and Alysanne she was like the uh, what do you call it uh, the beloved of the realm or something like that like everybody the, the realm's delight that's what it was like they'd go around this progress and she would like hang out with people and like oh there's this cool girl that's like really happy and fun and playful and everybody would like her and then she died but then Rhaenyra the one from the TV show she kind of had that same deal everybody liked her but then once she had her baby and she kind of got fat and nobody liked her anymore it's like they all didn't want her to be... They skipped over her. Like, they, Viserys promised her the crown, like, his whole life, and then he finally dies, and she's off giving child, giving childbirth, giving birth to, like, her third kid or something on Dragonstone, and nobody tells her, and he sneaks and has um, Alice, Alice and Hightower's son crowned because he's, like, the oldest male. So they had this thing, like, near AC-101. They had this council that said, like, it's a pro... I forgot what the word was for. It's like the, the oldest male should be take precedence over the females. And it was, uh, once she found out about that, it caused her to have a miscarriage. And that really pissed her off. And that started the whole Dance of the Dragons. They started going to war with each other. And then uh, Reyna also was passed over for Ceres. So she was kind of like on their side. And then they had a certain amount of dragons on each side. Like Rhaenyra had potentially 12 dragons versus 4 or something if you could get people to ride them if there wasn't people to ride them so then you had these kids called dragon seeds because some of the old kings and stuff they would have like all these mistresses and they would have all these bastard kids and they would like going through people would try to ride these dragons and they didn't know if they were dragon seeds or not but they had like white hair and they assumed they could be so they would get eaten by the dragons or just burnt to live and it's like it's fucking brutal and there was this three dragons that were wild and one of them was called Cannibal because he's eating other dragons one of them was uh, the shadow or the ghost or something like that because nobody could ever find him and there was one called Sheep Stealer and this one little black girl she was like sneaking sheep out and giving it to him which later they said she was being a whore to be able to like afford the sheep to give to the dragon so she kind of like talks this dragon and letting her ride it and then she became like one of the main people in this war and then you got this guy Oakheart, who was really good, and he had these other bastards that came up, like uh, the Hammer and uh, uh, Hugh the Hammer. And what the fuck was that other guy's name? Either way, they kind of betrayed him, <laughs> and they joined the other team, the Allison Hightowers, the Blacks versus the Greens. So they joined the Green Squad, and then so many people just got fucking owned. And then you had, let's see, who took over? Eamon was the guy with the eye, missing an eye. And then his, uh, uh, Raina's kids, they thought they were Strongs because she married this guy everybody thought was gay. So her kids came out with brown hair, and she had this friend whose last name was Strong. So she thought she was fucking him and having these kids, like bastards, but not saying that they're bastards. So then they would, he called him a bastard, he cut his eye out with his knife, which is pretty dope. I mean, this was all on the TV show, I think, so, because he went and sent the one kid down to a storm's end, and the one guy was already there, and they had the big dragon fight, you know? Um, so then, how did it, who, who was reigning after that? Aegon III took over after a bunch of other bullshit. And he was like this really brooding, he never spoke, nobody liked him. There was a really cool, like all these like scenes in between, stuff that was going on. Um, people getting dicks cut off, man, getting <laughs> all kinds of cool shit. But... 
he got trapped in his own tower because all these different people was betraying him and they were trying to get him to come out and they are actually just wanting to kill him and stuff and he kind of called their bluff and he knew what was going on he held out in Magor's hold fast for so long until they got these people to come help him and oh there's this one guy that made himself the hand of the king because he wasn't old enough he like uh Olwen oh, Unwin uh what was the fuck's his last name I forget. Anyway, he should have like destroyed that guy's whole family line once he got old enough. Uh, man, there's like so much stuff in this. Another part is like in the Game of Thrones ending. Arya goes west over the Sunset Sea because she wants to see what's west of Westeros. She wants to like look for this land nobody's ever found. But this book kind of says that there was a guy that did that. He kind of went far south, he ended up at the Summer Isles, so he did kind of, they found his ship later in a shy, so he circled the globe, but was there land that they didn't know about, maybe? Like, there could have been? <sighs> yeah, they also have that First Night Law, that there's a movie called First Night, where the king can bed a woman on her, married, on her wedding night, that they got rid of, but the dragon seeds were from before that, so... That caused a whole bunch of ruckus. And then you got like these people that were... Oh, the Lysenian, the Lysine Spring at the end? Where they have like this dude... Uh, one of the kids. Viserys II? He, he was in the middle of one of these dragon wars and he went missing. And that's why the Egan III was all depressed. And he was actually in Lys being traded around with these slave people. And the Oakheart guy went and like found him, paid a bunch of money for him, and then brought him back. And so that made Egan happy. But then they started this bank and they started like bringing a lot of this Lycene culture in. And it turned out everybody started putting all their money in this bank and then it failed. And there was all kinds of like corruption and shit. And then they had to just like kill them all and wipe them all out. And it was like this big mess. I mean, this book is full of stuff. Also, I should have looked up some of the artwork and showed you because there's a lot of cool artwork within this. Um, where's that one girl that was like a pirate? Look at that shit. These are some good drawings. That was a coronation ceremony. There's a dragon with his wings getting burnt off. Yeah, I should have done the Google search. It'd probably been way better. Guy. Oh, here's the one dude with his two sisters. It was really, you know, like the legit uh, Iron Throne where you would cut yourself if you were a bad leader and stuff on it. It just had everything. I don't know why to give. I should give this a five out of five, but it's just like I don't feel like this would be for everybody because if you don't like reading like historical stuff probably get bogged down with like a lot of it is like one chapter will say something and then the very next chapter will kind of repeat it and it'll just start naming a bunch of dudes but if you've like seen if you look at if you're the kind of guy that stares at the map a lot and you're trying to like understand all these different houses and how they're all related it's kind of interesting to see how it evolved because there's some houses that are in game of thrones that hadn't even like come up yet you don't really hear about the lannisters much until near the end because they weren't really a big family at that time and you hear like maiden pool family like the Mutons and the um, the pools and Jane Westerlings like some of those have like similar names as the ones in Game of Thrones it's kind of, I don't know some of them are, like, uh, some of them are new some of them are kind of like old I don't know what I'm talking about anymore I just, I just really get into Game of Thrones dude it's fucking dope